welcome to a new vlog. I'm not fully awake yet, but I thought we could get ready together. If you're new here, welcome. I would love if you subscribed. I'm Kaylee, I'm a designer and content creator, and I live in New York. I'm late 20s and just navigating a lot of life changes right now, which is fun. I'm starting with Merit's Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. I have been using this formula more regularly lately and I've been getting compliments in person on my skin, not online. So I feel like <laughs> it actually counts and because it's in real life. And I think this routine that I'm about to show you is why, because I don't personally feel like my skin has looked any better than normal. But this makeup routine definitely makes me look very glowy. I also use their priming moisturizer. I love their minimalist stick for foundation. And I feel like with certain moisturizers, it can cause pilling. So I just stick to their products. It's kind of annoying when a brand does that, when they, when they make you use a few of their products to get one product to work well. I've also been using this product in the place of under eye concealer. This is the Colleen Rothschild Illuminating Tinted Eye Cream. You just need a little bit. It's a really nice morning skincare product. Even putting this on without putting any makeup on just makes you look a lot more awake. And it's also very hydrating. Since I was a young girl, I have always been a hairy girl. It was something that I was made fun of, even in grade school for. As a teenager, it was always really embarrassing learning how to deal with my hair removal. Even though I don't think it's something that you should be embarrassed about, I personally like to be as hairless as possible from the neck down and even on a lot of areas of my face and my body just naturally doesn't want to do that and i have found that the best solution for me is laser hair removal i used to pay for super expensive in salon treatments for laser hair removal but with my hair and body type i've had to keep going back on a regular basis to maintain and that honestly just doesn't fit in my budget anymore and it's not a way that i want to spend my time so i was super excited to find you like where i can do my at home laser hair removal in the comfort of my robe in my own space wherever i want it's easily transportable so i'm going to show you guys how this works and tell you a little bit about the benefits and thank you so much to you like for partnering with me on this portion of the video also if you guys want to try this out for yourself i have a 120 dollars off code for you the code is kaylee ulk i'll put it on the screen here and i'll also have it in the description box below along with a link to the device you like is tough on hair and easy on the skin also when you buy the product through that link you will get extra aloe vera gel for free we start by putting on our eye protection these are actually kind of chic they look like my actual eyeglasses that i wear which are really funny but we don't want to harm our eyes in this process so that's very important i have my device connected to power i recently showered hence the wet hair and my legs are hair free so they're ready for the treatment you want to make sure that you've shaved right before you treat the area or you could damage your skin It honestly feels very cooling, which I would expect it to slightly burn just from my past laser hair removal experiences, but it's so nice that this has the built-in cooling feature to make this a really easy experience. And it's honestly super fast and easy. Other leg. All done. They suggest as a treatment schedule, it's a little bit different for the at-home device than what you might do in salon. So for weeks one to four, they suggest treating the area once every two days. And then from five weeks on, you should be able to do every half month or every one month, depending on your hair growth. It's such a quick process. I love that I can just do it at home without having to travel. It's so nice to have an effective product at home that fits my budget and is good for my sensitive skin. As I mentioned earlier, they're offering a limited time sale for you guys. You can use my code to get $120 off, which is a crazy discount 
I'll have it on the screen here and also in the description box below. I can't recommend the product enough, especially if you're a hairy girl like me. I am constantly on camera. I especially was this month with fashion week events and parties. So this is such a game changer for me. It's such a big confidence booster. You like is tough on hair and easy on the skin. Thank you so much again to you like for partnering with me on this portion of the video. And now we'll get back to my vlog. This is Merit's Minimalist stick I was just telling you about. I have the shade Dune. It's just kind of a cream stick. You can use as much or as little as you like. I like to start with my fingers and then buff it out with a brush. I'm gonna go ahead and put some chapstick on because my lips feel really dry. This is my favorite chapstick, but it's also my least favorite chapstick at the same time. It's by this brand Evolve Together. It's incredible for dry lips, but it breaks me out if I get it on any skin around my lips and then it causes those awful lip pimples. But I'm someone that suffers with really dry lips, so I haven't been ready to give it up because it works so well. Okay, and this is one of my new favorite products. I think this heavily contributes to the glowy skin compliments I've been getting. And this is by It Cosmetics and it's one of their sun blushes. This is in the color Sun Blossom. It's kind of like a peachy color, which Listen, I wouldn't normally find myself using, but it's a very natural blush. It literally looks like you were just out in the sun and it's super creamy and glowy, but it blends in really nicely and just looks really natural. Then I'm using a highlighting powder. Then I like to use like this bone shade just with my finger on my lid. And then I use a dark brown eyeshadow and I just smudge it on the outside of my lash line. Again, I don't really want it to look like I'm wearing eyeliner, but I think it makes a big difference in the definition of my eye. I really hate my eyebrows lately. I wish they were just a little bit more lifted on my face. I've never gotten any like injections or anything. And I think I'd like to hold off for as long as possible. I have this weird fascination with women who I find really cool who have clearly never gotten any work done on their face, but it could probably also never be me. And then this is one of a cosmetics serum glosses. I love it because it's not very sticky and it's a little bit out of my comfort zone because it's like a berry shade. But my lips naturally have a good amount of pigment. So I think it's good. One of my last vlogs, you guys saw me do the temporary mask on my hair that made it red. It's pretty faded, but it was so nice. It was just a temporary fun thing to do. I think I might do it again. I used this product by IGK, especially knowing now that it looked really vibrant when I first did it, but it's also faded so well. Might be my new thing. So I have some content to shoot today. I also need to do some accounting work. I'm still kind of like wrapping everything up with my business that I'm closing. I feel like it's gonna take until like the end of the year to really finish up. I'm so excited to have it fully done, but I'm kind of dragging my feet for some reason. And then early this evening, I'm taking a hip Pilates class with a couple of my friends. It's one of my absolute favorite workout classes, but I was so sick last month and I still have a cough. So I haven't done any like higher intensity workouts since then so i'm a little bit nervous but hopefully i'll be okay I 
And on that, so what didn't work is exactly what you're saying. If you just talk about the science, it What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't be so anxious, lady. We're at Siggy's studio just for a second. Monday's first time here. She's not loving it. to use too much heat on it and I'm sitting on my deck outside this is like our screen covered porch upstate it's so so beautiful you can probably hear all the nature outside and I thought I would sit down and catch up with you guys a bit while I have my coffee because I feel like I haven't done this in a while I usually get questions from Instagram stories when I do these little integrations in my videos so I have them all written down here. I'm filming on my phone, so I had to write them down on my computer. We thought we could have a fun little catch up and I know there's quite a few of you who are new here, so I'll answer some basic questions about me as well. Starting with a more basic one, someone asked me how old I am. I am 27, my birthday's in March and I'll be turning 28. I am curious though, if you didn't know my age, how old you thought that I was. I've suddenly been getting carded a lot more <laughs> in wine stores since I cut my hair short. I think it does make me look a little bit younger. I've been following you for years. I'm originally from upstate New York. How do you like it compared to Brooklyn? I love it up here. I'm in the Catskills region and it's honestly one of my favorite places on earth. I'm not sure which video is going live yet first so I don't really want to spoil it but I think you guys probably already know this but we are planning to move up here full time very soon and ditch Brooklyn so I feel like that's enough of an answer in itself. I love New York City so much. I've lived there for almost 10 years. My partner Siggy is the same and I think our time there is just up. And when we talk about our future, it doesn't involve New York City. And who knows, maybe we'll leave and want to come back. I just really want to be close to nature for the rest of my life and I think there are some cities that allow that but New York makes it particularly difficult. I grew up in rural Appalachia in the mountains so this feels very very homey to me and I love all the seasons here and I just feel most at peace. I want to have more animals one day. I would have never wanted to admit this when I was younger and my younger self might even be a little bit disappointed in myself because I feel like I tried to run away from nature for so long and like a slower way of living for so long I wanted something so opposite but now I don't know the city is just a little bit overstimulating for me and it didn't used to be but I would say for the last few years it's increasingly so. It's also incredibly expensive and only getting more expensive. What do you look for in a hairstylist when getting your hair done? I haven't really been going to a hairstylist that much lately, but for cuts, I really like to go to Japanese salons. I will leave a few below that I like in the city. I've tried out several different ones. And for hair color, I used to go to Arco in downtown Brooklyn. My hair girl there just moved to Florida, but it's an organic color salon. I love IGK for at-home products that are still healthier for your hair color-wise and for glazes and stuff. I love Davina's for healthier hair care products. They have several salons in the city as well, but I definitely prefer a more natural salon and if they're doing cuts, I always prefer a Japanese cut. What's something you didn't expect going from one to two dogs? Oh, I didn't think it would be so difficult. I kind of even hate saying that. I'm very hard on myself about ever expressing anything that could be interpreted as regret because I don't feel regret. I love my second dog so much. She is a huge challenge. We definitely have, both of our dogs are Vishlas, which I 
if you know anything about dog breeds, they are one of the more challenging dog breeds you could own, but I think they're so rewarding too. And we adopted her kind of out of the blue, but we were talking about getting a second dog for quite a while. And someone just emailed me and said, I want you to have her basically. So we went and got her and we got her still when she was pretty young. I think she was almost five months old when we adopted her. So we've had her most of her life, but she's a really bad resource guarder. She definitely has some aggressive tendencies and our other dog is so submissive and sweet and she's sweet too but i just would have never imagined how hard it would be obviously that's always something that can happen when you bring another animal in your home and we've made so much progress on it but i will say i definitely didn't expect it to be so difficult someone also asked me how she's doing and said your post with her on tiktok the other day was so precious Oh, she's definitely doing better. I think it kind of goes in waves. She's just wrapping up her first heat cycle. And I think that was really aggravating her aggressive tendencies for the last month. So we've really been feeling it. And it's just hard sometimes to feel like you need to be hyper vigilant 24 seven in your own home to make sure she's not getting a hold of something that she can't have because she swallows things so fast and then you have to make her puke which i've done way too many times <laughs> um or going after our other dog seemingly unprovoked but i think she just has a lot of anxiety i'm pretty sure we're gonna get her on medication soon but we've done a lot of work to make her behaviors honestly so much better so i still have hope and she's just my challenging little girl i'm sure she probably would do better in a single dog home but most of the time our dogs get along so well and i love her so much and she's just my little project dog forever probably and I we always say we're so glad that she's with us because i think her situation could be really bad if she was with someone who didn't have the patience the time money energy to care for her we don't even have to talk about it what is your favorite non-alcoholic beverage i love gia's so much i recently got gifted a lot of non-alcoholic beverages for a fridge partnership that i did with rocco they're those really chic mini fridges Oh, there's a deer. I love Usu teas. I'm also gonna link some of those below for you guys. Did you always know what you wanted to do in life? How do you know what to prioritize? That's kind of a hard question for me because I feel like so much of my life has stemmed from being in the right place at the right time, the right place being the internet, so not really a physical place because that's what sort of kickstarted my career and opened up so many new opportunities for me. Like I said, I grew up in rural Appalachia and I would have never been able to afford coming to New York or really even leaving my hometown before I would probably be like a teacher or a nurse otherwise. And if I got a scholarship, I would have went to college. I probably would have tried really hard to get an academic scholarship. So my life would just be a lot different if I never started posting on YouTube. I've been making money from this since I was like 13, which is insane and that was really early at that time to be making money online and it's allowed me to branch out into different careers safely it allowed me to put myself through school it has afforded me so many opportunities and this isn't me discounting any hard work but a lot of it is luck and like i said being in the right place at the right time. I think I always wanted independence and I've always been interested in business, but I'm not sure I would have thought that it was possible to pursue anything like that. So I don't think I would have. I've always loved kids, so I can see myself working as a teacher, as a social worker in some way. I do think I've always had pretty strong intuition about what I want to do, but it's so hard to say if i've always known what to prioritize in life i think coming from a background where now providing for myself is such a focus that definitely shifts my priorities a lot i have a really hard time taking breaks or doing things just for fun especially with my current job if i can't monetize it in some way or create a business out of it in some way or get a good deal or whatever i think that's just like a financial sort of scarcity Thing that's always gonna be with me but I don't know who knows what my life is gonna be like in the next decades it could be totally different than I imagined I think I would have never imagined myself moving out of a city someone said how is your relationship with your family I think we relate Ugh, this isn't something I ever talk about and I just will probably never go into any details about because it's like a private thing and I never want to air out anyone's dirty laundry 
myself <laughs> included on the internet but I don't have much of a relationship at all with my family and sometimes that's really hard I feel like a lone wolf at times but I think as I've gotten older it's just something that I've accepted and I'm so excited to be a mom myself and in the least selfish way possible hopefully change that for future generations and nurture those relationships and kind of build my own family with non-blood friends whatever as well and just if you have a similar experience to me i see you i think i used to have a really hard time being around friends who seemingly had such perfect family relationships or being in romantic relationships with partners who seemingly had such perfect family relationships it definitely just takes time to have the sort of radical acceptance that it requires and it's hard but it gets easier and sometimes your peace is so worth it i'm still really close with my sister and i'm so proud of her but that's kind of it on the family front for me for anyone that's still alive at least anyone else i was really close with has passed away and that's just life last couple questions that are a little bit less intense what is your favorite season to dress for? I love fall and winter because I love layering and wearing black and just not getting sweaty. How to navigate long distance friendships. This is something that I don't think you should be asking me. I think I have a really hard time keeping in contact with people, at least with people that require constant communication and maybe that sounds really bad i'm not the best at texting phone calls whatever but i definitely have several friends who we can pick up right where we left off if it's been a year we try to plan trips to see each other on a regular basis at least like two to three times a year and that's what works the best and we have like little mini catch-ups here and then but it's always nice to catch up in person. I don't know, I'm just not the best at it. It's something I really need to be better at though. Do you see yourself moving off the East Coast? I don't know, maybe one day. I feel like climate change wise, I feel the safest in the Northeast, but I would die to live in the Pacific Northwest. The nature looks so beautiful there or somewhere in the UK, I don't know. We'll see, but I am definitely a New York girl for now. Those are all the questions I'm gonna answer because I've been filming for 20 minutes, but maybe I'll do another one of these soon. Bye.